So, good morning, everybody. And we switch gears from reversal of diabetes or remission to management of type 1 diabetes. So, can you raise hands? How many of you are actually treating type 1 diabetic patients? Yeah, so there are a lot in the audience. So, this is a very interesting topic because we are talking about management of type 1 and how it differs in the very young patients, so that's, that's up to 12 years, and we could extend it to 14 because there's no clear-cut definition of what is young, what is adult. And adolescent in India, we could include patients between 12 to 18 or maybe 14 to 18. And when I talk about the young adult, I talk about type 1 in age more than 18. So I'm going to talk about challenges in management of type 1 diabetes and how the management differs in three different age groups. So living with type 1 is very demanding and a lot of patients experience psychosocial challenges. Now, patient centricity is important and individualized care can help reduce stress improve psychological functioning and it can improve outcomes. Now, how do we promote patient centricity? Because how do we do it? You have to gauge the education level of the patient, not just the patient, but the parents. Then the healthcare professionals are ill-equipped. Just three days back, I think I spoke to a parent very, very nicely and spoke about type 1 and they wrote a nasty letter to me saying that you told our 12-year-old type 1 that she needs insulin for life and she has been crying because the previous doctor said start insulin and we'll see maybe we are able to stop so again it's a challenge whether you how how much do you tell the patient do you talk about complications in the first visit how do you channelize or how do you educate it's a process doctors it's not so simple but i'll try to make it simpler for all of us now my slides are not moving can anybody from the tech team help? My slides are not moving. Meanwhile, I continue to speak. So if you have a, a young patient less than 12 years diagnosed as type 1 and you're not able to manage type 1, don't treat the uh, not so uh, old type 1 as a miniature. No. Yeah. Don't treat them as a miniature type 2. Please, that's the message which is very clear. Type 1 is a different ball game. If you're not well equipped, you should learn, and learning is a process. But don't burn your fingers by treating very little patients. India, a lot of type 1. Now we are going to become the type 1 capital. This is uh, the map showing the type 1. We have very limited data coming from Dr. Vimon in the southern part, from Archana Sarda and Aurangabad. And we in Delhi are a part of the YDR or the Young Diabetes Registry. And we've been seeing increase in the incidence of type 2 in the young, but most of our patients in that age group are type 1. Now, active involvement of people with diabetes and support for self-management. This is very important because care in India is primarily based on economics. So no one type uh, one diabetic patient can be managed like another type 1. So you may have a patient who may receive three doses of regular and two doses of NPH insulin. And then you have patients who can afford more who may be on analog insulins. Then you may have patients who are not able to check because we are struggling with the sticks, blood sugar testing, equipment is costly. All of us can pitch in. The RSSDI is doing it. We at our individual level can do it by buying sticks at a lower cost by procuring it. Now, diabetes education should be tailored to the education level of their family and the resources available. So you can't tell a patient who doesn't have two meals on the plate to test four times before every meal and at bedtime and also take analog insulins. So you'll have to strike a balance and then you do have a patient who can use a pump. So you have a spectrum of management of type one and that's the art of managing a type one and never say that the patient is going to be stuck in that category. So today I may have a patient who's on four doses of uh, three doses of regular insulin and maybe two doses of NPH. As the child grows up and gets educated and starts working, we may actually be able to uh, start a continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion and a pump in that patient. So life is not static and therefore the role of education and the role of hope 
that yes, today you may not be on the best possible therapy, but yes, when you grow up, study and work, you can be. So I have patients like that who've grown with us and we've been providing them support and now they are supporting our young patients. So that's the message again, support children or young people with type 1 diabetes and they end up supporting your children. So it's like a chain that you build up. So challenges while dealing with the young, lot of psychological, emotional, social and medical hurdles are there. Young patients decisions should be made by the parents but you should involve the child. I have a uh, child as young as five years. I'm sure Dr. Anjana and Dr. Uh, you will have patients who can inject themselves. So young as young as five and we do have 15 year olds who refuse. They have needle phobia and their parents are injecting. So again it's individualized education. Age and maturity, it's important. We have to train the patient. Now, recognizing patient centricity in young patients, you should recognize that the patient can learn. You should talk to them about blood glucose monitoring, how to inject, how to count carbohydrates. This is important. It's very simple. You can just divide into low carbs, mid carbs, and high carbs. So you can have 30 as mid, uh, you know, low, or less than 30 as low, 30 as mid, and more than 30 as high carbs. Very simple. And also show them a roti and say, this has 15 grams of carb. What the patient sees is very easy to understand. So I do have, you know, every month you could call your dietitian to show portion sizes, to say this is a katori of dal, this is one roti which has this much carbs. So seeing is believing and I think that empowers the patients and their families. So you have to teach them to cope with fluctuating blood glucose levels and our approach in a type 1 should be quality of life and not glucose centric. Don't punish the child for one high or punish the child for one low. Now, young children, the biggest concern is feeling like they are a burden on the family. So they keep saying that my father has to spend so much money on my insulin and my sticks. Ma'am, can I test less often? Then... Another thing that pains them is being treated differently. For example, you have their mothers keep calling, have you eaten? Even if they have gone for a birthday party. The other thing is sometimes the peers actually ostracize them if they are on a pump, so much so that they don't want to be on the pump because they feel that the pump can be seen by others, particularly in the girl girls. So they're not allowed sleepovers and outings, picnics. So there's a very delicate balance and you have to talk to the families. Family can show support to their young children by choosing to eat healthier, enjoying the same food as the child, joining in the child's activities and just helping to check the child's blood sugar if the child can't check or at least supervising the numbers so that they don't fudge the numbers. Now, how to talk to a child about type 1? Very interesting. Speak their language. Let them know that it's not their fault. Please explain it's not your fault that your insulin secretion from your pancreas has decreased. Talk to a child in simple terms. Talk to them that the pancreas makes a juice called insulin like a lemon has insulin. If your eyes are weak, you use a pair of spectacles. If your pancreas are weak, you use insulin. Unfortunately, insulin is available as an injection, but very soon give them hope. Give them hope that very soon there may be other ways of giving insulin. Other thing you have to do is train the child to become an adolescent. So how do you do that? Call your child with the parents and the adolescent type ones together in one. Every month I do it, you can call them together. So that is, transition will then become very easy. Now coming to teens and adolescents, move to self-management. They should be taught the skills. They should be taught how to inject. They should be taught how to rotate insulin sites. There's a fine balance between supporting your children to become independent, independent and self-management. So you have a spectrum. There are parents who don't care about the blood sugar and the values and there are parents who are overly concerned. So you have to strike the right balance. Now some suggestions to ease your child's move to self-management. Best thing is to empower the child to become independent. So you should allow the child to choose the dose. If the dose is wrong, the pre-meal doses can use carb counting or if you are using a correctional dose, you should teach them how to use the mats. So if you teach them how to use a bolus, what kind of bolus is needed? What bolus is uh, needed if you are going for a party? If you are eating cake, that empowers the child and then the transition becomes easier. So they can make informed decisions. This is what you teach them. Don't give them too much responsibility. 
but again, too soon but don't be overprotective is what you have to teach your patients now cornerstones we know is healthy eating physically active and meal planning then of course it's important for everyone to eat healthy the caregiver and the child should be taught about calories fats carbs and of course salt so this is important meal planning is important particularly patients who inject bolus in the morning at 7:30 and in a metro take a 1 hour bus ride to the school they may need another bolus in the school and that's where comes the role of the teacher where the teacher has to be instructed that the type 1 diabetic patient may need another bolus in school at 11 o'clock when he eats with the children again the tiffin should not be grossly different from other students because then the child feels ostracized so being active of course ada says we should encourage the type 1 to be active now when do you move from adolescent diabetes to an adult setting this is difficult because we don't have a transition clinic internationally children are transitioned with a clinic called a young adult with diabetes clinic so these are different people but we don't have transition so some children continue to follow with the pediatric endocrinologist some of the, them continue to follow up with the adult endocrinologist now how are the children's needs different from adolescents and from young adults children are compliant they seek approval so if you have a good sugar they want you to say wow you've got a good sugar they of course should be taught self injection should check blood sugar and self inject in school also may be supervised by the nurse adolescents is the problem which all of you seeing type 1 will agree that they are the ones their insulin needs are high particularly during uh, menstrual cycle they may have mood swings they have lot of parental and societal pressure particularly class 10th and class 12th timings for coaching they sometimes miss their insulin injections so there comes the role of changing the insulin we could go to a second generation long acting insulin where the need to inject every day at the same time may not be there so you could switch to a more than 24 hour acting basal insulin like a degludec or a u300 glargine so that the adolescent can have more flexibility so he can inject at 9 pm if he's not going for tuitions and can inject at 11 pm or maybe 12 if he's going for a coaching and he's getting back late so flexibility in the adolescent and young adults have lot of other issues biggest issue is jobs if they don't they feel guilty about the high costs now they're dependent on their parents so we have to empower them girls particularly think about marriage and if they are getting married we have to talk to them about contraception and the need to have a good hpa1c before they become pregnant so that congenital malformations and other complications can be avoided so this is a job in the young adult that we have to train them for we have to talk to them and empower them right so i tell my girl uh, girl patients and their families that marriage is not the end of the world the girl will eventually get married so i'll quickly go through my slides self management issues also change with age so when you are younger it's more important peer pressure is important going out is important picnics when you are an adolescent there are different uh, stresses and when you are a young adult there are different stresses so these are the various concerns and we can address them and i have been talking about these concerns and uh, what is burnout now this is an important slide that diabetes burnout happens is a state of physical and mental exhaustion caused by continuous stress of diabetes and the effort to self manage it so they become very difficult they become non compliant they are unmotivated they may miss insulin doses quality of life is impacted and there's a very very good scale called the paid scale and asking just one question and that paid one score there's only one question do you constantly worry about your future and possibility of serious complications and if the answer is yes just one question it has a concurrent specificity and sensitivity of 80% for the diagnosis of diabetes related emotional distress so you should ask this question every time the type 1 comes to your clinic and if the answer is yes you understand that the patient is emotionally distressed now many family members want to help but they don't know how to help and the majority of family members have not participated in diabetes education so again the message is very clear all of us should go back and at least delegate one day in 3 months for education of the young 
type 1s the adolescent type 1s and the young adults who already gone through this struggle they are like the caterpillars who struggled and have now become butterflies so we should use them so you should form a chain of help hold hands of the younger ones young ones and then you know so that they become healthy adolescents and healthy young adults with type 1 diabetes so you know the challenges and in an economically underprivileged society insulins but you can still manage to arrange insulins through the rssdi through other societies you can actually help the, uh, the your own patients can give insulin sometimes my own patients sponsor the uh, other patients so we have a group like that where one person who is sponsored by me now sponsors another patient so resource poor setting education should be continued don't just label the patient who has type 1 and is poor that he will not be able to manage his diabetes some of them manage diabetes very well with insulin support and a little bit of support of glucose sticks so education is very important and uh, how to address psychosocial i always talk about the five p's doctor i love this slide and this holistic care by me was enhanced during the covid time so we talk about the 5p program where the patient the physician the parents the peers or the friends the psychologist are all important and we should have a multidisciplinary team at least involve the parents involve the peers the, which could be a sibling which could be another type 1 with diabetes in the management and emotion addressing emotional issues with the type 1 and psychologist is very important i want to add a sixth p to it the principal or the teachers of the school so we must actually give uh, you know talks on type 1 in the nearby schools so you can have a six p the principal so teachers should be sensitized and we've written a paper on that these are some of the education empower and enlighten some of my own programs educated and empowered patients live longer this is our education and support programs we talk to the type 1s about storing insulin the types of insulin we ask families to ask us questions and seek answers and we do a point of care hpa1c in the clinic we where i ask them to pay whatever they want to pay so anybody can pay from 50 rupees to 500 depending on what they want to pay so this is very very interesting because this way you can manage type 1 better then you can have online platforms for teaching your type 1 and their families it's very simple you can involve all of them on a particular day this was my paper in ispad translating rich experiences to evidence where we found that the teachers were not sensitive if the child had hyperglycemia and went to the washroom she thought he was disturbing the class when the child had severe hyperglycemia and ended up passing urine in his clothes the whole class ostracized the child so much so that she refused to go to school and when we found out and changed her school she started performing much better so you have to go to the root cause of all the problems so this is about sensitizing teachers awareness through camps is the answer because one diabetic learns from the trials and tribulations of another diabetic so they feel very you know attached to each other so we have these online and offline groups awareness through camps these are the various camps these are my empowered patients these are the when i started practice the girls parents would say don't tell anybody that my child is type 1 and now we have these three girls proudly displaying their sensors you can actually see the flash glucose monitoring happening in these three young empowered girls engagement with patient this is me teaching them hands on how to cook well what is protein how much protein how do you increase your protein how do you increase it in vegetarians and in non vegetarians so my last slide building a support chain is important managing diabetes is more than just writing a prescription like type 2 in type 1 you have to go beyond writing a prescription it's not about diet exercise and drugs it's about emotional empowerment and that is the gist that we should make a chain and support the type 1 thank you